Patricia. Patricia, you have got the square root of 4788 raised to the power half. How did you? Um, the only okay. difference is that half. Yes. So because if I, when I look at the question, it said the modulus of the modulus of u minus v times the modulus of w, of which I had to find the modulus of u minus v, which is one one four, which is the which is the square root of one one four. Then I multiplied it with the square root of with the modulus of w, which is square root of forty four. And then, because I'm looking for the modulus of those two square roots, I must like. Eh? No, I made a mistake. I think. Patricia, because sorry, sorry, I have a question. Yes. Pat, uh, yes. What was the u vector that you found when you say when you worked out u minus v? I got square root of one one four. No, I'm asking about the vector. Like you, you were supposed oh, to. The, 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 vector, the vector was negative five minus two minus nine and minus two. It, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, I think here I made a mistake because I should have squared the square root of 114. When I square it, like I, I was going to get the, the square root of 114 plus. Hmm? I was going to get 114 times 42, which is the square root of 4788. Of which the lady is correct. I'm the one who's wrong. I so, raising it to the point. Okay. So Patricia. Yes. You sir. say you made a mistake. So which answer are you agreeing with? The square root of four seven eight eight. Okay. Thank you. Who who indicated that uh, she got the square root of 4788? Was it Nora or was it Nogwazi? Nom Oh, Nom Tandas. Nom Tandas. Okay, who else agrees with Nom Tandas on the square root of 4788? Patricia. Patricia, only. The others disagree. Now, Spussy, so what did you get? I agree with Lerado. So. You agree with Lerado? Theo, I think we're heading for a tie here. Theo? Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll have to go with the ladies with the 4788. And I say this because the methodology is the same methodology I used, but my answer is wrong because I made an error with the vector, but how they did it is exactly the same as I did. So I'm going to be inclined to go with the square root of 4788 as well. Now let's talk to Sibusis. Sibusis, so? Sibusis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, what did you get, my brother? I got the same as the uh, The square root of 31 and times the square root of 42. Mm. Okay, so can you mind giving me 30 seconds to work it out again, so to be sure? All right, well, we'll wait. I'm um, sir. Hello. I'm getting the square root of 40, 114 times the square root of 42. I'm getting the square root of? 114 times One. the square root of 42. 114 times the square root of 42. Two. Yes, sir. I agree. That's what I got. I agree. Is the square root of 114 times the square root of 42 giving us the square root of 4788? No, it doesn't. Yes, sir. No. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. It does not. Say. Yes. 
square. F to be squared. He has to say the square root of the square root, ne? Then okay. We still say C has got the square root of 114 times the square root of 42. So my question is, so yes, sir. Is, is, the, is the square root of 114 times the square root of 42 similar to the square root of 4788? Yes or no? Seven, no, sir. Okay. Mm. 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 We have a problem here now. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Uh, so can I say something, sir? Yes, please. Maybe this will help. Uh, the question oh. says the norm of the norm of u minus v times w. So that's the same as the norm of u minus v times the norm of w. So Yes. They can take out the norm of u, then put it outside, then calculate that separately. So my advice first is to calculate the vector u minus v, then they calculate the norm after, then they calculate the norm of w, then they <laughs> multiply them. They'll get that. Yes. No, it's possible. Yes. You may say u minus v. Ne? If you get the components, you must find the the norm of u minus v. After that, you multiply to double u straight, <laughs> not the norm of Yeah, but remember, the norm is a constant. So if you say the norm of u minus v, it means the norm of u minus v is the same as the constant. So let's, for example, let's say the norm of 3 w. That's the same as 3 times the norm of w. So you can take out the 3. So the, the same way as that applies, that, that means the same as u minus v, the norm of u minus v is a constant. So you can place it outside, then solve it. Okay, may I please say this? Yes, uh, are we all looking at 6b? Is it the way, okay, let me double check something. Not to say I don't trust uh, Lerato. I do trust him. That's 6B. 6B. Yes. We are looking at this. Eh? Can you all see 6B? He copied it correctly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, what do we do here? We find U minus V. Okay? Do we agree? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Then from there, we get the norm of u minus v. Yes, sir. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. After that, we multiply by vector w. Okay. After doing that, after multiplying by w, then we take the norm of everything, of what we would have found. Let me come here. Allow me to come We're here. with you, sir. We're with you. Here, we first get u minus v. Yes, sir. Then from there, we take the norm of u minus v. After getting the norm, we multiply by vector w. Then after that, we take the norm of the whole entity. Of, yes. Mm, okay, yeah, I agree with you. That's how I thought about it too. So basically, so what you're saying is we work from the inside going out. Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay, I'll, people, how did you approach it? Say, uh -huh. I said u minus v, then I, I found the norm of u minus v. After that, I multiplied that norm of u minus v 
to to W to Vector W. Mm -hmm. After that, when, when I got the the components, I I took the norm of that component again. Yes, yes. the whole component. Yes, the whole. Then yeah. we should then we should get the same answer. Mm, so literally, work from the inside and you go out. Hmm. Yeah, so I looked at it too. Is there anyone who worked it out differently from the way we are saying we need to work out this exercise? No, sir, but what I did was I took out the norm of U minus V to the outside and did the norm of W and then multiplied them. I hear you, <clears throat> but now. Yo, yeah, I mean. I hear you, Sposiso, but OK. We, we, you, based on what you said, and then even what I said, will we get the same answer? Yes, we should get the same answer. Hmm. OK, so here's yep. a question. Is the norm of three times W the same as the three times the norm of W? Hang on, let me write down. Is the norm of? Of three W the same as the norm the three times the norm of w then okay i captured the first one the norm of three w is it the same as three times the norm of w they are constants they should be okay so that's what i did so i applied that same method that same method to 6p so mm. Logic tells me that they are constants, so then they should be the same. Now yes. I'm worried if you, if you people are getting different answers. Who's getting sir. different answers, sir? Hello, sir. Hello, I'll be with you. Whoa, 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 Let's finish with Zbuziso. Zbuziso, what's your answer? Is your answer the way you worked it out similar to what the others got? So there, are, there are those who said they got the same answer. Say. Similar to yours? Yes, sir. OK, those who agree with Sibusiso, who are they? Hello, sir. I'm sorry. I, I needed to like point out my perspective regarding his question. Eh? Like hmm. when he says is three u is, did he say u or w three u equals to the norm of three oh, times this, let sorry to interrupt. This is what yeah. Sibusiso said. Sibusiso hmm. said the norm of three w is the same as three times the norm of w. Oh. But now I thought that he said three W, which is a vector, and then the norm of three times of three times yes, which is not equal. Um, sir. Yes. Can I add my official comment to the whole thing? Yes, please. So remember, I told you that um, I had made an error with adding one of my vector components. Mm-hmm. So I went back and I fixed it and I read it the whole sum. And indeed, my answer is the square root of 4788. I redid it twice and I got square root of 4788. OK. Let me start from the beginning. OK. Please just don't say I agree because I've got a list of people here. Those who agree with Theo your name and whether you agree or disagree before we start. No, I agree. Thank you. Patricia, please. Thank you. So, which is you disagree? Hey, oh, uh, no quasi? So, 
Yes, sir. Hello. Do you agree with them or not? On I'm the same. Of <laughs> it's the same oh. answer, sir. Oh, it's the same answer. Okay, okay. Thank you. Just stop there. Just yeah. stop there. It is what I needed to hear. That's what I needed to hear. Okay, thank you. These people Can love multiplying them? big numbers. <laughs> Sorry? These people love multiplying big numbers. I see today. Oh, okay. Can we then step off this one? Yes. Sir. We agree there is an agreement. Thank you. We are now going to Lerato's work. Oh, unfortunately, now let me step off Lerato. Now let me go to Pio. It's the second oh. one after Lerato. We are now going to look for number seven. They are saying, let V be a vector with the components minus two. 3, 0, 6. Find all scalars k such that kv equals to 5. Now, this is how Theo approached it. That's v with his negative being like a full stop. Find <laughs> all <laughs> scalars of k such that Okay, I see the norm. Okay, now we've got K. V equals to five. Now, the O is saying K is plus, plus or minus. Is that a five, eh? Five over seven. Yes, sir. Five over seven. Okay. Please. Anybody who agrees with Theo, let me start with those who agrees. We see, sir. I got five over seven only. Positive five. What happened to minus? That's Patricia, no? Yes, sir. You only got positive seven. Positive five over seven. Not, I didn't get the minus one. I see the size plus or minus. Oh, you only got positive, the positive five. Yes, sir. Okay, what did you get as your V, my sister? As the norm of V. Patricia. I got. Hello, sir. I got seven as the norm of V. Someone at the background, please mute. Is it someone who's listening to the radio? Is it the news or what? Hello. Society. So, I have muted somebody. I've also oh. muted Sibu Siso. Oh, okay. Thank you. Patricia, Sibu Siso, please help out Patricia yes, here. Sibu Siso? Sam. Yes, sir. Please help out Patricia. Uh, what's his struggle? Sorry? What, what, what is she struggling with? Patricia. Mm. Yes, sir. Please talk to Sibusiso. You said you only have positive five. Five over seven, sir. <clears throat> only. I got a similar answer. I said that mine, I, I do not have the negative five over seven. Aha. Uh -huh. That's why I'm requesting Sibusiso to help. Okay. okay. Um, Patricia, did you know that if you have a square root, 
then that square root leads to your answer. You must have a plus or a minus. Yes, specifically if, if you create, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, okay, I was gonna say the okay. same. Where is the square root coming from? Because look, can I ask you something? Yes. Let's go back to basic calculus, right? Mm -hmm. If you have to give a value for x and then your final value is x is square root 4, what is it simplified mm -hmm. as then x? If x is square root 4, think back to it like calculus. If x is square root yeah. 4, you have to simplify x is square root 4. What would you what would you then give as your x? X is what? Let me write down because x is equal to square root of 4. Then yes, and, and then if they said simplify. It would be equals to two. X no. would be equals to two. No, it's plus or minus two. Plus or minus two. Okay, I get you. So now you square negative two, you get four. And if you square two, you get four. So all possible, all possible roots for x are then plus or minus two. Yeah, I, I I get you. I understand you. So now my question is because here we are dealing with vectors. <laughs> Like, you, do I literally say plus or minus, even though there was no square root? Well, there is the norm. Square root. She square root to 49. <laughs> the square root was on the norm. Yes, oh. the square root was on the norm. And so yeah, but okay, that this is Theo, the, yes. um, the norm is always positive because it's a magnitude. It's positive. It's a direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... In this term, I think in the in our case, our case should be positive because okay. the norm is positive. It's always positive, I think. Am I right, sir? The norm is always positive. Yes. Yeah, so in this case, we don't need the minus part. We just need the positive part. Ah, noted. Teaching moment. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Say. Hello. Can you please go to my work two minutes? I feel like I got a right answer with the wrong method. I don't know if my method is okay. Who's talking? Mom Tandas. Mom Tandas. Okay. Can you please correct me, guys? The yours was number, uh, number seven. seven. Yes. Okay. Is it how it's supposed to be done? Respond, guys. <laughs> yeah, but ish, it took the try. <laughs> but yeah, it's the same thing. It's not a different model. You did the same thing. You just calculated the norm separately, and you calculated the norm inside your your problem. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Mm. But same but thing. but but can I say something? And yes. based on how you did it, so and yeah. I like how you did it because based on how you did it, you would have got you would have then gone and created the square root for the side that is a twenty five over nine, right? Yes. And I suppose then in that case you would have ended up with a plus minus five over seven. But as Pusu said, because we're dealing with magnitudes, only the positive answer then becomes applicable, as he stated, and as so also confirmed. But yeah, I like how you did it. It was actually nice and quick. Yeah, straight yeah. to the point. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike some. <laughs> okay. Is there an agreement on number seven? Yes, sir. No disagreement. No disagreement. Now, the whole idea is to share ideas. You know, these sections, in fact, let me not say these sections. Please, go and make yourself proud by pulling distinctions from this module. We will. Yes, yes please. Now, Assignment let's go six and... entered the chat. <laughs> Sorry? Assignment 6 has entered the chat. The guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I> now, <laughs> let's go and look at number 8. Let V be this vector. Find all scalars, K, such that KV equals to four. Let's stay with Nomtandazu. 
No, so you can go back to Lirat. Ah. Ibu, angit sis lah. We got one. We got one. Let's go and see what the you got. I got plus minus one, so you don't have to even bother going. But we know it's going to be one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any disagreement or any agreement? Any disagreement on the one? I say I, I... always agree with the right answers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Now in exercise nine to ten, find you finding the dot product of u and v, u and u, and v and v. Okay, now where should we go? Where is this folder? Patricia for the dot product of u and v, she got minus eight. Anyone who agrees with Patricia on number nine a? Um, so mm -hmm. I got negative 10. Negative 10. The and I'm wrong, sir. I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. That's the funny story, sir. What happens, Bizzo? Uh, for some reason, sir, you see where she wrote 6 plus 2 minus 16, sir? Uh-huh. You know when your head sees the answer, but it says no to the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened to you? Yeah, so I forgot the two and said 16 minus 6 for some reason. So I just, the two just ran away for some reason. I don't um, know. I'm sorry. Then exercise 10. Is there anyone who, are, who disagrees with Patricia? I agree. Nora, Wendy, are these people here? Vincent, Ishmael. Okay, let me come here. Nogwazi, are you here? Nogwazi. Okay, I'm scratching out Nogwazi. Nomtandazo. Nogwazi is here. I agree, sir. Um, but, Nora left saying she's got problem with connectivity, but Vincent and, and, and Ishmael are still here. Okay. And there's Sinentantla, Queen Tabet. There's Sinentantla, Joini. Sinentantla? Yes. Sinentantla. Okay. Now let me start from the beginning. Nogwazi, are you here? Thank you, boss. No, Nogwazi, are you here? No, please talk to us. Oh. Doesn't want to talk to us, sir. You. No, I'm You are here. Yes, sir. Yes. Nora. Nora. Thank you. Nora. Nora is on. Oh, Nora left. Okay. Hey. Patricia, you are here, no? Where's your word? Yes, sir. Who's this way? He always here. Wendy. 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 Yo, oh. Wendy is no, there's Winnie. There's no Wendy at a there is Winnie. Eh, Petrici. No, Winnie like Petrici. Wendy. Yes, Maybe she'll come Wendy. back. Oh. Patience. Patience. Let me tell you who's here, ne? It's okay. Ishmael. Ishmael. It's Nokwazi. Yes. Nomtandazo. Patricia. Susiso. Silentlantla. Tio. And Vincent. And Vincent. Yes. Okay. Thank you, boss. Silentlantla, how are you? And welcome. Silentlantla. Yes, hello, hello. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, How are yeah. you? Good. We are not in a movie here. Ne? This is our workshop. We all talk here. Okay. Yes. 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 We are not in a movie. Vincent, welcome, brother. Vincent. 
Vincent. Oh, Ishmael. So I'm here. Hello, can you hear me? Is it Ishmael? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's Ishmael. Yeah. Yes, welcome, Ishmael. Thank you, uh, sir. Please call Vincent for us. Vincent, you there? Hello, Vincent. Maybe maybe he's having the same issues as me. So I've got uh, connection issues. Uh, periodically, I lose connection, but I am here. Okay, thank you. Now, now, all of you, we must all of us talk here. This was part of homework. So now we are just verifying the answers. So if you are quiet, then we don't know how to help you. So let's all talk. Okay, this is 9A. This is how Patricia worked out 9A. We all, is there anyone who disagrees with Patricia's answer of minus eight for the dot product of UNV? Anyone who agrees, your name and what your your view is? Uh, I agree, sir. I stated people. I agree. I agree, sir. I also agree. Thank you. I'm stepping off it. People, please, let's talk. Now, uh, Patricia, is this B? <laughs> yeah? Is this no, B? No, sir. It's what A, is sir. They what said we must find the product of U and V and U and U and V oh, and V. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, yeah. No, I follow you now. My mistake. Do we agree with Patricia on the dot product of U and U? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Anyone who disagrees? Okay, thank you. The dot product of V and V, Patricia found 24. Anyone who disagrees? No. No. Thank you. I'm now stepping off that. I'm now going to uh, B, 9B. I'm still with Patricia. Patricia, for the dot product yes. of USB, she got zero. Any disagreement? Nope. No? Dot product of UNU, she got 54. Any disagreement? Nope. Dot product of VNV? Nope. No disagreement. No disagreement. Thank you, Kim. Now, the next one is uh, 10. We are now going to 10, 10 A. We are still with Patricia. Question 10. The dot product of UNV, she got minus eight. I agree. The dot product of UNU, she got 15. I agree. The dot product of VNV, she got 27. I concur. We are going to B. The dot product of UNV, she got zero. I agree. The dot product of UNU, she got 10. Mm. One of us made an error. So let me see. So it's UNU, right? UNU, yes. 1, 1 plus 4 plus 9. Um, what did you get? 10. 10. Was, sorry? 10. <laughs> yes. Okay, Theo, you say you made a mistake. Mm, Are you yes, yes. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Sorry, I made a mistake. So we agree with Patricia. Ten is correct. On... Thank you. Now the dot product of V and V. Patricia got fourteen. Do we agree with her? Anyone yes. who disagrees? Yes, sir. With me? I agree. You agree? Thank you. Yes. Yes, I agree as well. Thank you. Now we are going to 11. 
Uh, okay, at least there is 11 here. Now let's see what is in 11. In exercises 11 to 12, find the Euclidean distance between vector u and v and the cosine of the angle between those vectors. State whether the angle is acute, obtuse, or 90 degrees. Do you still remember those conditions, ne? Yeah. When <laughs> acute, and when an angle is obtuse, and then even when it's 90 degrees, do we still agree? Do we still remember? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go to 11. Uh, we are sticking to Patricia. Patricia, this is, uh, okay, we are going to do it piecemeal. Do you agree with All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me double check the answer. Find the Euclidean distance between vector U and V and the cosine angle between. Okay, now, we can. This is the dot product. Mm -hmm. Then we need the distance. Let me quickly check something, 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 something. Patricia. Yes, sir. I'm just quickly double checking something. Eh? Oh, all right, sir. We are here. This is what we are applying. Eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is what we are applying. Do we agree? Uh, members, do we agree? We are yes, here. Eh? We are here. Eh? Yes, this, is what using. this is what we are using, meaning we need to get the dot product of the two vectors as well as we get the dot product of the two vectors, we put them in the numerator, then we find the length of each vector. Then we'll, be, we'll then be able to tell, we'll then be able to find the angle. We take in a calculator, but you are not allowed to use a calculator. It should be simple numbers to can be able to find the angle. In your, in your calculator, before you were banned from using calculator, you just find the value and then you will just say second function cost. Then it will give you the angle. But then, even without your calculator, it is still easy to find that. Now we are going there. We are going to check whether theta is the dot, whether the dot product is greater than zero, whether the dot, if the dot product is greater than zero, we say it's acute. If the dot product is less than zero, the angle is obtuse. But if the dot product is zero, that angle is pi over two. I just needed to remind our, I just needed us to remind ourselves about this. Uh, where are we? Where are we? 11. Where is 11? Okay. Here it is. Now we are going back to what Patricia did. Patricia, please talk to me. Please take me through what you did. Okay. So I, I first found the norm of you, the distance actually, of U and V, between U and V, which is root 14. And then I got the no the dot product of U and V, which is equals to 15. Then I found the angle. I used the formula cos theta is equal to the dot product over the norm of U and V, of U times V. Okay, one. Yeah. Um, uh, hey. Thank you, Patricia. But... Patricia, let me take you back. Yes, sir. We have got cos theta is equals to the dot product of u and v all over the length of vector u multiplied by the length of vector v. 
Yes, sir. Do we agree? Lerato is here. Sorry to disturb. Thank you, boss. Welcome, Lerato. Yes, sir. But, but now, here, uh, members, let's talk. Do you see what uh, Patricia did here? Here, in the first. I agree with the dot product of UNV, the way you went it out, okay? Yes, sir. What I'm just, what I'm just saying is this, it's Ruzizo. Now, you come back. This is the formula that we are using. Cos theta is equal to the dot product of u and v. Uh, hey. Patricia, you will be yes. marked wrong if you do this. Mm. Do, you, do you see my cursor? Do you see the cursor? I yes, yes, I see it. You see the cursor? Yes, I see it. So now you and I then somehow disagree here. On, on the formula, say, that I used. Let's come here, you and I, again. Yeah. Mm -mm. What is this thing? OK, let me be slow. This. Do you see equation 18? Oh, the dot. Then the dot product also called the inclusion in a product. But I, I saw the question was speaking about the distance. I, maybe I did not understand. Or am I maybe misunderstanding the question? Please, let's, okay. talk. Let's, let's talk. Say. Yes. Sorry, isn't it the question? The, the question says find the Euclidean distance between U and V and the cosine of the angle. Yara, yara. So this is the way we calculate the Euclidean distance. What distance. do we do with the Euclidean distance if we do not use it to calculate. Okay. And now, up to so far, you and I agree that we need to use this to find what? An angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. The angle. Mm -hmm. Are we agreeing? Yes. Patricia, do we agree that we need to use this to find an angle? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the next thing that you and I need to talk about is the what? The distance. Yes, sir. Okay, where is that distance now? Uh, okay, Patricia. Yes, sir. Please help me out. Is yes. distance and length the same thing or not? It's the same thing, sir. Now, if it is the same thing, please tell me whether number five is similar to the question that uh, we are talking about or not. So if I remember well, the formula that I used, I got it from you. You were scrolling and I did a screenshot. If you can scroll up, maybe, what the, what the topic at. I'm not against what uh, you are saying, but what I seem to be in disagreement with you. Hmm. Um, is the coach's words? That's what I talked about. Hey. 
Hey, now what do you <laughs> say to you about? So I, so I think like, the I think what she did for the distance is correct. It's only the angle that's wrong. And the angle is only wrong because she multiplied the the, the two vectors inside the norm where it should have been the, the norm of each. So that first part looks correct. It's x2 minus x1. It should have been the norm of each. Now I understand. Yeah, so the norm of each is... But I think that the distance part is correct. Uh-huh, there I agree. There, uh, there I agree with you to say, I did talk to you about the distance between two points. Yes, yeah. say. Sorry, hmm. say. Yes, who's talking? It's Wendy. Yes, um, Wendy. Welcome. If, okay, I, I see that you are against the way Patricia did the course, uh, whatever, whatever. What I what I want to know is no, uh, 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 what? Uh, there is no whatever whatever whatever. Yeah. Let's oh, talk. sorry. Um, that 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 uh, Patricia maybe lost it. I'm going to you where she said cos theta is equals to u v all over the norm. Mm -mm, the what? Yeah, the no, distance I, of you multiplied by the distance of you. What I'm asking is, what, what, what is the point of us calculating the Euclidean distance between u and v if we are not going to use it? What, what, what were we supposed to do with it? See, because it doesn't look like we're going to use it here. This is number eleven. Eh? Yes. Find the Euclidean distance between U and V. Okay. Yes, she found it. And the cosine of the angle between those vectors. All right. Oh. Now, it's two parts to this. We're looking for the Euclidean distance. Patricia, thank you for having found the, the Euclidean distance. Okay. Patricia? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. On that one, we agree. But you and I agree, disagree on what? On this second part. Yes, sir. I, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No. On this formula, I agree with you with the dot product of U and V, but below in the denominator it should be the norm of U and the norm of V. The yes, sir. Of I, I, I see that. You see that? Yes. Sir. Thank, Thank you, you for correcting me. Uh, Thank you. You are welcome. That's why we are all here. Let's go to yes. Norm Tandas. Norm Tandas, Norm Tandas, Norm Tandas, Norm Tandas, Yes, Norm Tandas, where are you? Um, here, sir. Yes, we need me Tandas here. Okay. Yeah, so I, I made a mistake, I know. Where is the dot product of U and V norm tender zone? The dot product of U and V is square root of what of seven of fourteen. The dot product of U and V. It will be three times one plus three times zero plus three times four. Okay, it will be this will be twelve. Okay, it will be fifteen. Do we agree? Do you yes, all agree? 15. Okay, now, yes. now we'll need the norm of vector u. What is the norm of vector u? Nine nine nine. Square root of twenty seven. Square root of twenty seven. Square root of twenty seven. Do we agree? Yes. Yes, square root of 27. Now we need the norm of vector v, which will be square 1 plus 17. square root of 17. Yes. So that is the square root of 27 times the square root of 17 Seven. is what should be in the denominator. Do we agree? Yes. 
So something went, uh, something, the wheels came off somewhere here. Yes, we agree. Yes. Sir. Sir. Sir, I, I, went, I was wrong. I wasn't supposed to calculate the, the angle of the, the theta was that. I was supposed to to end there on cos theta is equal to 15 over what that and use the dot product to determine yeah. if my my what what is acute obtuse or whatsoever. Hey people, we don't have the what what here. Say yes, Lerato. This question, I don't understand why it's such a big deal. You calculate the distance between the vector and then you use the vector of the vector to just say that the end is achieved, then you are done. Yes. Please come back again, Larajo. You calculate distance and then you calculate what product. And then you make your conclusion from the dot product if the angle is achieved or 90 degrees. Yes. yes. Okay. Now it Thank makes you. sense. Oh, is it making sense? Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. You make a conclusion based on, on your dead product. Say. Oh, so I don't use my word. Huh? <laughs> it makes sense. Because I calculated and then I can to confirm. This is 11. 11. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, you use the calculator. To confirm that it's acute. I don't have a choice. Oh, okay. And we all agree. Here is two parts. Is the distance as well as the angle. Do we all agree? With the distance as well as the to say the angle is accurate. Let me go and check what the your yes. Ish. Ish. Stance. What are we saying about the angle, my brother? Ah, uh, sir, me I couldn't use a calculator, so I didn't know what the angle was. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, okay. I mean, I, I can't do that angle in my head, so I left it there. All right. Here is my advice to you. Please. If you get this, if you get this kind of a question in the exam, ne? yes, sir. You see these numbers that we have here. These yes, numbers. Sir. You see this mouse. Yes, sir. Yes. The numbers will be simple numbers for you to can be able to tell what okay. a special angle is. These questions in the exam, the numbers will give you special angle. Okay. So, they'll be, so they'll basically be based around the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yes. Ah, perfect. Yes. Thank you. It will not be these type of numbers. Here is just to give you a practice. It's big practice, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You will get the numbers, these numbers, these numbers here. At the end, this <laughs> will be leading you to a special angle. All right. I hope I'm clear on that one. I'm now stepping off this one. Too clear. Now, oh, that was 11. That was 11A, yeah? Now yes, let's sir. go to B. Uh, the distance. Lerado found the distance to be the square root of 59. Anyone who disagrees? What is, is this? Vincent, 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 Wendy, what are you saying? Hello, people talk to us. So what what is this one? Is it eleven B? Eleven B, yes. And oh, yes, I got the same thing. I got the same thing. Uh, yeah, queen. 
Okay, let's see. Patricia. Yes. And then Nomtandazo. Yes. The oh the oh yes. Now the angle. The radio says the angle is the angle is obtuse. Do you agree with him on that or not? I know you didn't use a calculator. Those who use the calculator, do you agree with Lerato or not? I agree, sir. The angle is obtuse. Okay, thank you. Now we are going to number 12. So, so sorry, before you continue on that, one maybe i'm just confusing myself with something here uh, I, I can't find it now but i read somewhere that when you're dealing with uh, maybe i'm confusing this with something else but where if the angle is negative then it's obtuse if it's positive then it's acute but i can't remember what it was for it's something to do with vectors but now okay never mind I, I, if i find it i'll bring it up again it might have to do with something okay. else who's talking uh, it's ishmael 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 here, here we are, Ishmael. Do you see this? Ishmael, do you see what I've highlighted? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about, but I can't remember what it's used for now. Yeah, I did see this somewhere. So, so if it's positive, then it's acute. If it's negative, then it's obtuse. And the reason for this is that if it's uh, if it's negative, they're going opposite to each other. If I if I remember correctly, the vectors are going opposite to each other. If they positive, they're going in the same direction. Am I correct in saying that? I didn't get that clearly. Um, I said that the, um, when you're working with vectors, if, especially uh, with the cos one, uh, if, if, the, if the angle is negative, it means the two vectors are going away from each other. Uh, if, the, if the angle is positive, they're going in the same direction. Therefore, if the angle is negative, it's obtuse. If the angle is positive, it's acute. Wow, I didn't know this. That's I we learn, we learn. Wow, I didn't know this. Thank you. Oh, I just hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, uh, Ismail. Yes, sir. Remember the trick function that we are talking about here is cos. Yeah? Yes. Now, in the first quadrant, all uh, all trick functions are positive. Okay. That's correct, yeah. In the first quadrant, all of them are positive. In the second quadrant, cos A, this cos is, is negative. All students take coffee. All students, uh, okay. In the first quadrant, all of them are positive. In yes, the second, second quadrant, Sign. Same is positive. Yes, sir. In the third, in the third quadrant, ten. That's why cos is positive. Now let's yes. apply. No, what cos is, is what is cos minus is, seven. So, so sorry, so so if you look at if you look at so. Uh, that angle 96 lies in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, cos is negative. Yes, only sign is possible. Only, only sign, sign is, is positive, yeah. Yes. Mm. And then cos is only positive in the fourth and the first quadrant. That's correct, yeah. Mm. Is it making sense? <laughs> because we are evaluating cos. Do we agree with what Ismail said? So, so if you if you scroll up a bit, there was a, I just wanna I just wanna if you scroll up a bit on this thing, yeah. So just a little bit more if you stop there. 
So if you look at that second picture there, uh, of the, so the first one, you've got an angle that's like acute as we know it. The second one, it looks like an obtuse angle. But if you look at the directions of the vectors, they're pulling in different directions. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's negative. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, why, that's why it's called an obtuse angle, because they're going in different directions. Ah, OK. It's above exactly. 90 degrees. Obtuse angle yes. above 90 degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, okay. Visually, it makes sense now. Yes, because if they're going, if they're in the same, di okay, yeah, it makes sense. And so, if it is positive, then what you're saying is that it's going to be acute, right? That's and correct. Yes, yeah, they yeah. Go in the same direction, and then when they're in opposite directions, they're bigger than ninety generally, which then makes them obtuse. Okay, okay. Yeah. Visually, it makes sense now. Thank you so much. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Now, now let's go. Let's go. Sorry. It's Theo. <laughs> Theo, what are Theo. you doing? Hi, Bo. Nothing, sir. <laughs> now, how was it me and Ed? It's Larado. Larado says it's Theo. There was an Ed. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> so, where were we? We were on number 11. Eh? Uh, yes, Tell sir. Okay. We need to agree. Yes. When we are done, can you let me take my 5C? I want to see something. When we are done, okay? Yes. All right, thank you. So let's say 11. We agreed on number 11B. Now we are going to 12. On 12, the distance that Lerado found is square root of 46. Is there anyone who agrees or disagrees? I agree. I agree. The angle Lerado says is acute. We agree. I agree. Yes, now I also agree. <laughs> okay. Now let's go to B. Lerado found the distance to be the square root of 10. I agree. Lerado says the angle is acute. I agree. Thank you. Don't worry about these uh, numbers. You see these type of numbers. In the exam, you are going to get simple numbers. You must just know. You remember those triangles? 30, 60, 45, 45. You must also know. 45. Zero and ninety. And so from like, there you just from there you know is there are multiples. Yes, Lerado. If you want to know these things, Anne, know for sign and then you invest them for cost. Like sign ninety, sign thirty, it's equal to cost sixty. So if you know sign thirty, uh, sign sixty, sign ninety. Sine 90 is equal to cos 0. Sine 60 is equal to cos 60. Sine 30 is equal to, you know those things, when you understand what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Lerato. This is uh, the uh, first thing at the beginning of the year that I re I requested you to do. Remember, I re at the beginning of the year, I requested you to know the sine curve and the cos curve by heart. Oh, yeah. So I've got Between I've got zero and degrees i've got a way to remember that quite easily if i can just if i can just explain it so if if what you guys do so what i do is you start off so you're writing in columns okay so you start off and you write pi over three pi over four pi over six then in the second column you start with one over two uh and then it's two over square root two and three over square root three then in the third column you start from the bottom one over two uh, 2 square root 2, and on the top, 3 square root 3, uh, square root 3 over 2. And then those are all your, those are all your values for each one of those angles. If that, does that make sense to you guys? It makes sense. Yeah, you are. Thank you. So if you, so if you write it like that, you won't forget it. Thank you so much, oh. Ishmael. Thank you. Now, now, 
do we agree with Gerardo on the angle? To say it's acute. Yes, sir. On 12B. Thank you. Now, the next one is, okay, this done, this done. Now we are going to 17. We are almost at the end of this. Theo refers to it as an, as an assignment. Mm -hmm. Now, exercise 17 to 18. Verify that the coach Schwartz inequality holds. Okay. Now, before I go and look at what you have written, let's go and look at Coach Schwartz inequality. What wow. is it? <laughs> This is what is being said. This is the condition, eh? That uh, we are looking at. You put are we this... Together? Sorry? We are proving this. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's not the inequality. It Which is. one is the inequality? The one set that has negative one is equal to less to what what? This one. This one. Are you referring to this? Yes. What is the difference between these two and this? They must be equal or less. <laughs> I don't know. Lerado, this sir, is what this. Sorry, sir. Coach, he's speaking coach. about the above one. There is the one which says negative one is less or equals to the dot product over the norm of u and v of few times v. Yeah, that one, say. This one. This. Yes. Okay. Okay, now let's let's read, let's read, let's read, let's read. Where should we start to read? Which we previously deprived. Hmm? There, which we previously derived for non-zero vectors in R2 and R3. Since that product and norms have been defined in the vectors Rn, it would seem that this formula has all the ingredients to serve a definition of an angle between two vectors, u and v. In Rn, however, there is a fly in the something meant. The problem in being... The <laughs> meant, only meant, only meant. The problem being that the inverse cosine in formula 20 is not defined unless its argument satisfies the in equality, negative one is less or equals to the product all over the magnitude of u and v, which is less or equal to one. Fortunately, these inequalities do hold for all non-zero vectors in Rn as a result of the fundamental of the following fundamentally results known as the Kechi Schwartz inequality. So because of this. We have Keshi Schwartz inequality. This is the foundation of it. Okay. This this is the foundation, eh? Yes, of the Watt inequality. It's fine then. Kochi Schwartz inequality. Which is hard. Is the I if Kochi Schwartz. Okay, now, Casey Schwartz, inequality. What, Lerado? <laughs> I'm saying if a white person had to say Glenn Madiwa Mkwena, inequality, <laughs> it's <laughs> All right. Now, 
I thank you for having brought this. And it is important for us to have came here now related to these two questions. Okay? Do we all see this formula number one? I mean, formula 21. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Thank you, Vincent. Do we all see this theorem, Coach Schwartz inequality? We see it. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Now let's talk before we go to those questions. Here, what are we saying, Larado? In question in, in equation 21. It is the foundation of Kershi Schwartz inequality. It is used. No. In simple terms, what are we saying? Oh, we're saying that for Cauchy Schwartz inequality to exist, that condition has to hold. Yes. And then here in the theorem, what is he saying? Cauchy Schwartz. What are they saying, Cauchy and Schwartz? They're saying since the above condition holds, therefore, this formula also holds. This one, number 22, ne? Yes, number 22. All right. Do you see number 22? Yes, I see. Do you all see number 22? Yes. Do you all see number 21? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now let's go to our question. Question number 17. It says, okay, in exercises 17 to 18, verify that the coach was inequality holds. Now, number 17, we've got vector u and vector v. You have seen the, you have seen the theorem. You have also seen uh, what Lerado read for us, which is in between the inequalities. Now, which one are you going to use here? Number 22. Do do they agree with you, Larado? I'm not sure. I, I number 21. But we use the wrong thing. We're supposed to use number 22. Number 21 is for proving number 22. But it's not verifying number 22. Please tell them again, my brother. Formula 21 is for proving number 22 but it's not verifying number 22. That's why when you use formula 21, all the answers, they meet, they're in between negative one and one, because I also used it. But then the correct formula was supposed to be formula number 22. Thank you. Now, can you, can you show us 22 again? Here it is, uh, Vincent. Do you okay. see it? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Larajo. Thank you, Larajo. Now, where should I go? Let me go to Patricia. Number 17. Oh, sir. Yes. The wrong formula was used. Where? In number 17, for almost everyone, we used formula 21. Hmm. But then, like, like, for me, I don't know about others. Me, I can do them, like, one minute, and then I'm done, so. Okay, let me see. This is Patricia. 
let me go and check nom tandazo nom tandazo uh, nom tandazo nom tandazo yes sir Please talk to us, my sister. I see something interesting here. You got the dot product to be minus yes. seven. Yes. 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 Someone is talking. I can't hear you. Okay. I see something interesting here. You got the dot product, yeah? I see the dot product. And also the norm or yes, the sir. length of vector, the length of vector u and the length of vector v. Then from here, you can just conclude that these two are in fact greater than negative seven, which that uh, theorem is actually look, saying. Do we agree? Yes, I am. Yes, sir. Thank you. And now number 18. Oh, no, that's A, B. Now we are going to B. Uh, who's that? No, I'm telling us. The dot product is this. Hey, this should be double. No, I'm telling us. Then we agree. <laughs> Do we also agree with Nomtanas on number B? I agree. Well, I agree. This has to be the norm. These two for U and P, this has to be the, the norm. So then the norm of three, the norm of two constants. As Wusis was already advised us. So, Koji Schwartz inequality will hold in number B. Do we agree? Yes, yes sir. sir. Thank you. Now we are going to number eight. Number 18, not eight. 18A. Nom tandazo, nom tandazo. The dot product is that. The length. She got four, seven. She says it holds. Cost choice inequality holds. Anyone who agrees or disagrees? I agree. I agree. Thank you. Now we are going to number B. She got the dot product to be number to be seven. In the length. Hey, Nomdanas, please. This not this is an absolute value. This is shouldn't be written like this. Do you agree? Yes. Is there an agreement with Nom Tandas on number 18 or the, any disagreement? We agree. We agree. If there's, yes, agreement, if there's an agreement, then thank you. The whole idea of uh, giving you this exercise was just for you to be able to practice and then apply all these tools that we were given in here without wasting time let's now continue let's now talk about orthogonality here they are saying let not let me not even bother you by coming here they are saying two and zero vectors u and v in r to the power n are said to be orthogonal if the dot product of the two vectors is zero. Okay? Two and zero vectors, U and V, in R to the power N are said to be orthogonal if the dot product is zero. So in this example, two vectors, U and V, the dot product is zero. Therefore, these two vectors are said to be what? Orthogonal. Do we agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, well, yes, we agree. Thank you. 
Now, the next thing that I need to talk to you about is, all right, I need to talk to you about from this paragraph here. They say, one lens in analytical geometry that a line in R to the power two is determined uniquely by its slope and one of its points. And that a plane in R to the power three is determined uniquely by its inclination and one of its points. One way of specifying slope and inclination is to use a non-zero vector and called normal. That is orthogonal to the line or plane in question. For example, where is this figure? This is the figure. This figure shows the line through the point P0, which has got the coordinates X0, Y0, that is the normal N, the coordinates A and B, and the plane through the point P0 with the coordinates X0, Y0, Z0, that is the normal A, B, C. Both the line and the plane are represented by the vector equation. Both the line and the plane are represented by what? The vector equation, number one. Where P is either an arbitrary point with the coordinates X and Y. On the line or an arbitrary point X, Y, Z, in the case of a plane, the vector from P0 to P can be expressed in terms of components S for a line, for a plane like that. Thus, equation one can be written as from the normal, this from the points. This constants, this constant, this constant, then this being the points for a plane. These are called the point normal equations of the line and plane, these two. Still with me. Now, let's look at, look at this example too. They're saying, here we are given this, it follows from equation two. This is two, it follows from here. In R2, the equation six into X minus three plus Y plus seven equals to zero, represents the line through the point. The point is three and minus seven with the norm six and one. And it follows from three, this three, that in R to the power three, the equation four into X minus three plus two Y minus five into Z minus seven equals to zero, represents the plane through the point three, zero, and positive seven. The normal is four, two, and minus five. Any question? Uh, sorry, sir, Vincent. Mm. Then does this uh, three, negative three, two, and negative seven, are the points on the plane or the, mm, I don't know how to put it like, yeah, are they, are the points on the plane? And then Which ones? This, this negative three, two, and then negative seven. Okay. Three and what? Three, two. Three? Three, three seven. Two, three, two. And then it's a three. seven. Three, two, and seven. No, two yeah. can't. Two can't. Oh, two. Oh. We are here. Oh, okay. We are here. The constants are giving you the normal. The points that we are referring to are this x zero, y zero, and z zero. In here. Okay. Yeah, 
Vincent, are you with me? Hello. Yes, yes. Are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Here, from four x minus x zero. Our x zero from that equation is what? Is this three? That means, okay. That three. Okay. Yes. That what what I want to ask is like these three zero seven are the points on the plane or like yes. the point yes. above the plane or I don't know that to put it on the plane. All right. These four As the okay. This this A, A, B, C, and then uh the normal vector parallel perpendicular. Can you explain that? We are now here. Let me start here. Okay. Do you see what I've highlighted? Yeah. For example, figure three point three one shows the line through the point point P with the coordinates x zero and y zero. That is the normal n, which is a and b and the plane through the oh. point x0, y0, z0. That has the normal no. A, B, C. Those constants no. are your normal. No, I'm covered like it by just seeing this like the n dot p0, p. Like I'm just covered. And then which means oh. those A, B, those A, B, C are the direction vector like it. Yeah, I'm covered. Thank you. <laughs> now, all that we have just been talking about up here with Vincent is now represented by this theorem. They're saying if A and B are constant that are not both zero, then an equation of the form AX plus BY plus C equals to zero represents what? A line in R to the power two with a normal N of A and B. Then B, if A, B, and C are constants, that are not all zero. Then an equation of the form AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals to zero represents a plane in R3 with a norm with A, B, and C. Are we together? Yeah. This is what we have just been talking about. <clears throat> Um, the other thing that I need to talk to you about is the projection theorem, but uh, not clearly here, but I need us to talk <coughs> about it here. The vector, oh yeah, yeah, even though this is flowing from there, but let me just come straight here to equation 10 and 11. The projection of u on a is given by the dot product of u and a over the length of vector a squared multiplied by vector a. This is being referred to as the projection of vector u on a or a vector component of u along a. Projection of u on a or a vector component of u along a. And then 11 is vector component of U orthogonal to A. The only difference is what? That U subtract the projection of U on A. These two are the ones that uh, for me are important to share with you. The projection of U on A, you just calculate the dot product. Divide by the length of A, then you square it, you multiply by vector A. That is being referred to the projection of U on A or vector component of U along A. This is the vector component of U orthogonal to A. Is U minus that projection. And that's it. You just need to keep constant keep focus of what they are looking for. Are we together? 
Thank you. Thank you. Now, these two. Sorry, sir, just a question. Um, so, so if you just scroll up a little bit there quickly. On the component one, you've got u equals to minus projection of error on u equals to u minus projection on the same thing. Uh, okay, but let, let's do an example. Let me see an example and then I'll, never mind, sorry, continue. Okay, here we are. They say, let u be this vector, a be this vector, find the vector component of u along a, and the vector component of u orthogonal to a. Vector component of u along a is the projection of u on a. How do we do that? Projection of u on a, you get the dot product of u and a. This is what they found. And then the length of vector a, then you square it. They found it to be 21. You just put it over there. Then you multiply by vector a. Just like that. Any problem on that? With that? Then, mm, for... That's a, that's a small question. Is this yes. like a vector, this projection? Is a vector like which is that is parallel to like a vector A or a, in the direction of A, like a, a chunk of like that vector, like on the on the direction of A, like if I may say that. Mm -hmm. In terms of the explanation of how they are located to each other that one i uh, just don't, i'm just not sure my brother but i'm sure about the application as they are sharing that with us okay. mm. no. and then this is the this is the vector component of u orthogonal to a you just in this case as they did in here it's just u minus the projection of u on a No, is it was, difficult? Uh, it's not difficult. I was asking about the first one, u on a along, u along a. Is it like a, a chunk of vector a, of vector a, u on a, like it? That was, that, that what I was asking. The projection of u on a. Mm -hmm. The projection of u and a, we find the dot product of u and a, as they did here. The dot product, here it is, they got 15. Then from there, you get the length of vector a, then you square it, they found it to be 21. Is then 15 over 21, then you multiply by vector a, that's it. Then here, they just brought in 15 over 21. Okay. And then the vector component orthogonal to of u orthogonal to a is just vector u subtracting the projection of u on a as they did in this case. Okay. Is vector u, which is that one, minus what you found from the projection of u on a. Are we still together? Yeah, well, that's for Vincent, I'm okay. Thank you. Another thing that I need to talk to you about is this theorem of Pythagoras in R to the N. If vector U and V are orthogonal vectors in R to the N with a Euclidean inner product, then this holds. Uh, they are just using the, they are just using this theorem over here to show this inequality. The next thing that I need to about, which I think is almost the last thing, is this theorem. In R to the power two, the distance d between the point p zero and the line a x plus b y plus c equals to zero is given by d. Note, equation 15 
and in B, this one is referring to a plane. In R to the three, the distance between the point and the plane. In A, distance between a point and a line. That is what I need to share with you. Sir? Yes, you. I missed that. Please say that again. Sorry about that. No problem. This theorem. In number yep. A, in R to the power 2, the distance D between the point, this point P, and the line AX plus BY plus C equals to 0. The distance is given by D is equals to A. This A, B, C are these. You see this? A, uh -oh, B, and this C. Okay? Yes, sir. And then X0 and Y0 will get them from the point X0 and Y0. And then below it will just take the square root of what? Of A plus, uh -uh, we'll take the square root of A squared plus B squared, which are these constants for a line, okay? Oh. Sorry, Vincent, like, Mm. This like equation D, the absolute value of A0 plus BY0 plus C. And then it's the same as like A into X minus 0, like the same way it was written like in the previous one. A X minus A, I mean A into X minus 0, B minus like a Y0, and then plus C. Is it the same like if I put it like that? This. this is for a line. This is for a plane. No, go go scroll ahead like it. Mm? Like, where that one that like, you show like a x a into x minus x zero and then something like that, like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, uh -huh. you pass like that. Here. No, like what I'm asking is like this AX0. Like is the same as like if. Those are the points. These are the points. Oh, okay. This X0 and Y0. These yeah. are these. They are the points on a line. Distance. Oh, maybe it's because maybe I was fast. In R to the 2, the distance D between the point P, X0 and P, point P with the coordinates X0 and Y0. And the line, this is the line. The distance is given by this formula. In a plane, in R to the 3, the distance D between the point P0 with the coordinates X0, Y0, and Z0. And the plane is given by this. Equation 16. Are we together? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. X0, Y0, Z0 are coming from the point. All right. Let's look at this example. Distance between a point and a plane. Now they say find the distance d between the point 1 minus 4 and minus 3. The plane is 2x minus 3y plus z, which is equal to minus 1. How do we do that? What do we do? We need to take we need to write it in this formula, in this form. This form. Whatever that is on the right hand side, you need to take it to the left hand side so that you have a zero here. Even for a line, even for a plane, whatever is on the right hand side, bring it to the other side so that you can have a zero. That is what they did over 
over way over here they took the minus one to this side now this is similar to the way it should be written in that uh, the way they explained it above are we together people are you still with me or am i alone uh, we are we are still around we are with you People, are you still here? Corona, corona. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. I'm still here, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. The, yes, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. The minus one was brought to this. So on the right-hand side, there should be a zero. Then the distance. They just use that formula that uh, we just talked about. This is, this is what, this is a plane. Now, this is what they did. This is what they used. Okay. Here is a point. You are called, those constants up there are 2, minus 3, and 6. Here is 2. Here is minus 3. Here is 6. But there are plus signs in between. Now, those points that uh, Vincent, were, Vincent was talking about, here are they. x0 is 1. y0 is minus 4. Then, uh oh, now what is it? Uh, um, what is happening here? Okay. Then Z0 is minus 3. Then you take the square root of what? Of the squares of the constants. 2 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 6 squared. Then you simplify and that's it. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Now, distance between parallel planes. What do we know about parallel planes, Lorato? The autocanal. Parallel planes, like they might be, I take them as like it's a parallel lines, like they might be like you must be like it. Have the uh, like the equal constant, like if the ratio between them, like because it's a plane, then I say like the let's say x and then a two, so then it, they are more scalar multiples. I took them as a parallel line. If I look another at thing, them, I agree with you, Vincent. I agree with what thing, you said. Mm -hmm. Another thing, like because we are on a plane and then we no longer talk about a gradient and then. So I think like the ratio like between them like the x and then let's say x, and then if like the x is one over two and then it, so y must be one over two and then that that constant like if they are equal then it means like they are parallel. I don't know if I'm wrong or right. What do we did we learn about parallel lines from standard? Uh... Standard six, seven, eight. Then, what were we taught? Same I agree with what you said. I agree with what you said. Same gradient. They do not meet. <laughs> don't meet. They've got the same gradient. Thank you. That no. is what I've been for. Parallel lines, railway lines. They've got the same gradient. <laughs> now, what Vincent has just said shared with us is what is actually being used here they say in this example they say the planes x plus 2y minus 2z equals to 3 and 2x plus 4y minus 4z is equals to 7 are parallel since they are normals for this plane the normal is 1 2 and minus 2 in this plane the normal is 2 4 and minus 4 Vincent, please repeat the statement that you said about the normals. Uh, like I said, uh, the two planes, like uh, I took them like as a parallel line, and then then uh, they are scalar multiple of one another. So that is why, like the first plane, and then uh, is a half of like the second plane. That's what I was talking about when I say the constant like it must be equal. If I take like one over two x, if I divide the second plane by two, and then I'll get like the first plane, then I multiply by the, the, second, the first plane by two, I get the second plane. So they are scalar multiples. 
Please ask them whether they understood you or not. Uh, fellows, do you understand what I'm saying or? Understood, sir. Thank you. Understood. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Vincent. Oh, no, thanks. Thank you. Now, let's look at how this was solved. They say, find the distance then between these planes. They say, to find the distance between the planes, we can select an arbitrary point in one of the planes and compute its distance to the other plane by setting y equals to z, which equals to zero in the equation. The first one, x plus 2y minus 2z equals to 3. That's where they are saying y equals to z equals to zero. We obtain the point x being 3, y being 0, z being 0 in this plane. In this plane, this one, this plane. Are you with us? Are you, am I still, are you still with me? Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, from sorry, 16. Like, sorry to ask, doctor. Which means, by yes. the way, what you are saying, and then you mean, I can choose any point, like, which means, like, I can have my own points. I can, like, I can say, like, I have one, 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 or beside, like, that's three, zero, zero. If I choose, like, depending on my points, like, that I choose, like, as you, if maybe I hear you correctly. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, Vincent. Please listen to me attentively. Okay. Now, this is what they said. You and I, let's pay attention to what I've, I've highlighted. Please read what I've highlighted, Vincent. We can select any arbitrary point in one of the planes and compute its distance to the other plane. Yes. You cannot choose any other point, but you can choose a point on in one of the planes. Oh, okay. Okay. As they did in this case, they chose this point in in this plane they chose 300 okay. in here you can choose 700 in this plane do we agree yeah uh -huh. now here we are talking about plane now using this formula using this formula then boom the distance mm -hmm. 2 is a constant. We are adding, eh? This 2 is coming from there. This one is coming from there. Yeah. Plus, this minus 3 is coming from there. This 6 is coming from there. This minus 1, remember, I said we need to bring it to the, the right, the left hand side. It is this one. Then you're multiplying by what? The points. Where is the, am I talking, is, yes, okay. Then the, the point here is what, the point, the coordinates of a point are one minus five minus three. One, here is the one, minus four here, minus three here, that is that constant. Divide by the, the square root of the squares of the sum of these constants, then we get that. You were on the distance between two parallel plates. Oh. Uh, we, we passed that one. We were now here. Mm. This one we passed. Now we are here. That arbitrary point is this one. So now, they chose this norm. They chose the norm for this plane. 2, 4, and minus 4. The point P0, which has got 3, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, and a constant, which is minus 7, is over there. Then you square the constant and take the square root. And that's it. Any question? If there is no question, please go and digest what we talked about.
Tomorrow, we'll start to look at the questions from this exercise set. Okay. <laughs>